Thank you so much. It's a pleasure of mine to be here with you and enjoy the wonderful, wonderful presence of the Lord that uh, I have felt since last night's service and again here today. And uh, I, I sincerely mean this. I guess I appreciate more than anything the uh, right hand of fellowship that is extended by brethren of like precious faith. Amen. And I, I don't take something like that lightly. It is a great, great blessing to be in fellowship with good men. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Garrett's preaching and then Brother Hearn's preaching here. I don't know how you feel, but at my house, when all of us pig out on a great big meal, amen, we have to walk about 20 steps at least to get to the living room couches before we even want to consider eating any dessert. Amen. So I'm asking you to stand and walk about 20 steps, just whatever direction you want to go. And shake hands with somebody. Amen. Tell them you're happy to be in church with them here at PATH Conference. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you do that? These are our brothers and our sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be in church together with the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Don't get too busy talking to them folks. We, we got a little something for you here. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Job, if you will. I'd like to read there from the 40th chapter. Amen. I knew they had a cordless somewhere here. There it is. 40th chapter of the book of Job. And I want to read there for you the first Eight verses out of that chapter, Job chapter number 40, we are living in the exact times that we have heard described in the preaching that we have heard. Both of them dovetailed together so beautifully, and I'm going to try to piggyback on for a little bit here today. Job chapter 40, verse number 1, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. And then verse number 8 is, I don't know about your mind, but it's a little hard for me to really understand what verse 8 is trying to say. And uh, that's why I'm going to lean on something out of the red letter edition of the King James Version of the Bible here to help, maybe it will help you like it helped me to understand what this verse is saying. Listen to it. He said, Wilt thou also disannul my judgment. Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? One translation of that verse, and listen to it, God says, do you really want to reverse my judgment and put me in the wrong 
to put yourself in the right? Do you really want to reverse, this and all, my judgment? Do you really want to reverse my judgment and put me, that's God, in the wrong? To put yourself in the right. Boy, God did talk to Job like a man, didn't he? <laughs> Amen. He really, really, really did. So my title is going to reveal my age here tonight. Amen. Others are telling it freely. I try to hide mine, to tell you the truth. Amen. But my title is going to reveal my age because it's a song that only those that have a few years on them can remember. But I want to preach to you about Mr. Big Stuff. Mr. Big Stuff. Hallelujah. Would you lift your voice and ask God to talk to us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mighty God. I love you. I praise you. I worship you. I glorify and magnify your name, Lord. Fully believe in God that there's help for each one of us here today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's help for our lives, God, and our understanding of the Word of God. I pray, Lord, turn the lights on, God, inside of our hearts, Lord. Reveal truth to us, God. Hallelujah. Help us to see ourselves, Lord. Maybe in ways we've never seen ourselves, God. I pray for the glory and the honor of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The Bible teaches us that the whole duty of a man is to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before our God. I confess to you that I struggle with all three of those, and uh, none of it comes easy to this flesh that I am a part of. But I would have to say that the third one is the one that I struggle with the most. And I sincerely believe that if you would be honest, that that probably is a common struggle among all of us that are here, in how to properly walk humbly before our God. How, when I read verses of Scripture like this, to make sure that I'm never trying to put God in the wrong so I can put myself in the right, and that I am humbly bowing before Him and believing His Word. A bumper sticker that used to be popular some years ago sprouted up on our church parking lot. I'm sure it was in some of yours also. Bumper sticker that said, If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. And so people in our church bought the one that had the line through the second part of that. They were putting the line through and saying, I don't need that I believe it part, that if God said it, that simply settles it. And it, it sounded good. But I have to tell you that I pastored those people long enough that sported those bumper stickers around to realize that just because God said something, it didn't really settle it in the mind of a human being. There was a necessary requirement that every human being had to do when truth was brought to their doorstep. They had to open up the door and reach out and embrace it. They had to be willing to say, I'm going to take that word of God and I am going to believe that portion of the Word of God. Now, it's easy for us who are oneness and Jesus' name people and, you know, believe in all this great apostles' doctrine that we have 
to say, boy, if God said it in those doctrinal truths, uh, that simply settles it. And of course, of course, that's areas that we have already convinced ourselves that we believe. But I'm here to deal with today all of the other areas of life, all of the other areas that have to do with how often this human nature of ours tries its very best to get God to reverse His judgment. Tries its very best to get God, that, amen, to accept the fact that Maybe, maybe what you teach in your word in that area could be wrong in this case and under my circumstances and with what's going on in my life that somehow, some way I'm going to prove that I was right. Job is known to be the oldest book of the Bible. He is thought to have lived during the time of the patriarchs that were there. However, if that was true or not, we do know that he lived without a Bible, without without a church, without godly examples of history that was before him. A great challenge for a man to try to get right with God without all of those benefits. You and I have all those blessings every day of our life, and we still struggle to obtain to the place that Job was at, where God said He is a perfect man, a complete man, a man of integrity who feared God, did the very best that He knew how to do, and sad to say, you might not agree with me, but... That's okay. Amen. Job's first set of kids probably died lost. Those that, when the great whirlwind came and it fell upon them, amen. If I understand much about principles of the Word of God, I think there's a real possibility that all of Job's first set of kids died lost. Why do you say that? I say that because Job made the common mistake that is so prevalent in our society today. As a parent, he didn't know the difference between intervention and intercession for his kids. He wasn't able to distinguish between those two. And and so it was, the Bible said in verse 5, when the days of their feasting were gone about, the Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now, I admitted to you, he didn't have a preacher to help him out. He didn't have a Bible to read so he would understand that. But Job somehow thought that, that as a parent, that intervention is what I need to do for my kids. Oh, hallelujah. And intervention didn't work back then. Intervention don't work today. Intervention will never work in the economy of God. Hallelujah. Because when children are beyond the age of accountability, according to God's laws, they've got to take responsibility for their own sins. They've got to do the repenting for themselves. No amount of burnt offerings or sacrifices can a mom or dad ever lay upon the altar that is some way, somehow, going to relieve the sin of their children. Well, I hope I'm in the right place. You get to talking to some people about their kids being lost, and they just reject it right out. Oh, hallelujah. He thought intervention was the way. 
the way, the way that I can get the job done. And so it is with SWATs at school. Oh, yeah. Whew. There was no intervention in that okey dad of mine. I'm telling you, if I got SWATs at school, the word was mum. You, 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 you just didn't let it leak out. Amen. Because he was evermore going to warm me up the second time when I got home. If he ever heard that I had a confrontation, there was no intervention in that daddy that raised me. There was none, brother. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you. And the parents that try to intervene at school uh, will try to intervene with the police. And they'll try to intervene uh, with the Sunday school teachers in the Sunday school. Uh, and they'll try to intervene with the pastor's wife that she's the problem. Uh, and they'll try to intervene with the pastor. And on and on and on uh, the story goes. Hallelujah. You wonder why I said his kids probably died lost? That uh, is the same reason I'm telling you. Uh, if intervention is part of your plan, uh, your kids are probably going to die lost. Oh, hallelujah. God's plan was intercession, brother. Amen. Lay them on the altar uh, and pray and intercede before God uh, and say, God, convict them. Uh, whatever it takes, God, uh, convict them of their sin. Uh, convict them of their rebellion. Uh, whatever it takes, bring them to their knees. Uh, they got to do the repenting on their own. Uh, I can't do any repenting for them. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I hope I didn't lose some of you already. Amen. Job's suffering was legendary. Financial wipeout, the death of all of his children, his health destroyed by boils, and no morphine drip to help him out. And oh, we want to brag about Job like, amen, he was such an example. But guess what? It only lasted seven days. That suffering in silence has limits, you know, with most of us human beings. And if you'll count it out, Job only made it seven days in that suffering with outside with silence. And finally Job started belly aching and complaining and griping and groaning. Matter of fact, from chapter number three to chapter thirty seven the vast majority of the words that are in there is he cursed his day. It was, why me, Lord, complaining, telling God it's not right for what's happening to me. Uh, he was arguing and challenging uh, the justice system that God had that was there and doing his very best. And, and God grabbed him by the scuff of the neck one day. Uh, he said, stand up here. Stand up here. I want to have a little man-to-man -man talk with you, Mr. Big Stuff. I, I, I want us to have a real good understanding. And in chapter 38 and chapter 39, God gave to Job 77 questions that demanded an answer. Brother, when God opens up with his machine gun, you better get ready to take a lot of bullets. Amen. Seventy-seven questions that God just... Brrrr. Do you want some more? Brrrr. You think you've had enough, fella? Come on, come on. And God started talking to Job in ways that, oh my God, that I sure don't want God to have to talk to me. Now, I, I'm going to read a few of those to you because I, I think sometimes we, 
we don't really get the grip on what God was trying to say to this guy that was struggling with walking humbly before God and saying, God, I don't ever even mean to hint that you might could possibly be in any way wrong in anything that you said. And knowing that you are a hundred percent right a hundred percent of the time and I am a hundred percent wrong a hundred percent of the time and I ain't questioning anything that you say, God. But welling up inside of all of us is this ego stuff, is this self-justification stuff, is all of this stuff that said, now, 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 God, uh, amen, maybe, just maybe you don't understand my situation. God started talking to him uh, and he said, fella, if you're ready, you're going to be standing a while. Uh, but he said, I, I, I want to ask you some questions. He said, who is this obscuring my design with his empty-headed words? Ooh, I like that. Why are you using your ignorance uh, to deny my providence? Uh, brace yourself like a fighter. Now it's my turn to ask the questions uh, and you to inform me, uh, confront me like a man. Come and answer these questions. Uh, from what vantage point uh, were you watching when I laid the foundation of the earth? Uh, tell me, since you are so well informed. Joe, you, you, you know so much. He said, would you tell me what vantage point were you watching from? When I stretched it all out there and I laid the foundation of the earth. Come on. Come on. You, 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 you've been awful, awful talkative here lately, Bubba. Amen. I, I, I just couldn't get you to listen and all you could do uh, was ask me a bunch of questions. Now we're going to turn the table uh, and tell me where were you watching when that happened uh, he said, tell me, since you're so wise, uh, was it you or was it I that designed the earth's plan, uh, measuring it out with the line? Uh, what supports the pillars at their bases? Uh, who set the cornerstone in place? Uh, who fixed the boundaries of the sea uh, when it burst forth from the womb? Uh, he said, in all of your life, have you ever, ever, even once, uh, called up the dawn? The joke. Joe, Joe, I, I, I want to know something. In all of the sunrises you've ever seen in the earth, did you ever call that sun to come up just one morning out of all them years of your experience and years of knowledge and living? Did you ever manage to get the sun to come up at your beck and call one day? Did it, did it, did you ever do that once, Joe? Did you ever manage just little itty bitty little ways up? Uh, have you ever rolled the dawn in red? Uh, did you ever make the sea's depths walk at ease through its hidden caverns? Uh, have you ever seen the doorkeepers of the palace of darkness? Uh, where does the light come from, Joe? And how did you get there? Or tell me about the darkness. Uh, where does it come from? If you know all of this, uh, you must have been born with them. You must be very old by now, Joe. You know all. Then he got to talking about the stars and the constellations. Uh, he said, is it at thy command the glittering bright Pleiades clusters so close or Orion's circlet spread so wide? Uh, he said, can you guide the morning star season by season? Uh, or can you guide the stars of the bear with her young? So, so, in case I need a substitute one day. Yeah. Just, just, just in case that the chauffeur needs to answer the questions one day for the lecture. Just just in case, Joe. But he said, if you've got any experience uh, of leading those constellations across the sky at night, uh, then maybe I could call on you and count on you uh, 
since you got it all together. And I'm the one that's wrong and you're the one that's right. You've got it all, Job. Is there, is there any way I could tap into a little bit of your knowledge and your experience, Job? He said, can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? <laughs> yeah, go, go, go ahead. Get on out there, Job. Hey, Amen. Do a little war dance. Do a little rain dance. Do whatever. Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Will lightning flashes come at your command and answer? Here we are. Can you stalk prey like a lioness or satisfy the young lion's appetite? Which of us feeds the ravens? Is it not God? Their, their little babies cry unto homeless for want of food. Job, is it by your wisdom? that the hawk soars and spreads its wings uh, above the south? Does your word make the eagle mount uh, uh, to nest aloft among the hills? Then he gets to talking about the behemoth and about the Leviathan in the sea. Whoa, I've read in National Geographic. Wow. That a blue whale, those creatures of the sea, a blue whale's tongue, just their tongue alone, weighs as much as a full-grown elephant. Uh-huh. Woo! God knew how to slap him around real good, didn't he? He said, come on, Joe. But he said, I- I'm telling you, those big old creatures of the sea, uh, you 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 got hooks that you can control them with. You got ways uh, that you can handle. Oh, you, you can lead the parade off of good, and you can tell me how I ought to be doing my business. Uh, amen. You can tell me everything that I'm supposed to be doing wrong uh, with the way I set it up, my form of government, and all that I want you to do. Uh, let me tell you, can you join in in this stuff that only I know how to do? Only I can get it straight. And only I can get it right. Amen. He said that unto Job, will the false finder contend with the Almighty? Is, it, is that what we're down to, Job? You're finding fault with me? You're finding fault with the way I'm running my business? I'm handling the whole universe. And I've got it all working right. But you think you're the only one that can run your life right. You think you're the only one that can call the shots uh, when it comes to your life and how you want things done uh, for you there. He said, has God's critic uh, thought up an answer? Will you still want to argue with the Almighty God, or will you yield? Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I'm insignificant. What can I answer you? I'm nothing. How could I ever find the answers? He said, I will lay my hand upon my mouth in silence. I have spoken once. I'll not speak again. I've already said too much. Then the Lord said unto Job out of the whirlwind, Brace yourself. We ain't done, buddy. This is a full 15-rounder. You ain't getting out of the ring yet. No matter how hard I've knocked you down, get back up and put up your dukes again. He said, it's my turn to ask you a few more questions. And you can inform me, Mr. Big Stuff. You can inform me. You can inform me. You can tell me. Do you really want to reverse my judgment and put me in the wrong to put yourself in the right? All 77 questions boil down to, in truth, just one simple It's a simple question that all of us have to face every day of our life. That is, do you really think you know more than God does? 
Do you really think that the way God designed and structured and planned for things to be? Oh, hallelujah. Do you know more than God does? God knew what mom and dad you needed in life. Yeah, he really did. And he could have arranged it any way he chose. But there are people in God's kingdom in 2009 that grow to adult years still fussing over their mom, fussing over their dad, fussing over their upbringing, fussing over, amen, what deprivations had to come to them in life. Are you the Mr. Big Stuff uh, that really thinks you know more than God knows? Uh, Amen. Let me tell you, do you know more than God does uh, about what pastor you needed in your life uh, to get you to heaven? (laughs) Ha ha. Oh, you knew I'd have to meddle just a little bit, didn't you? You, you know more than God does about his system of tithe and offerings. Because for you, it's a payday loan shop whenever you need it. And God, who set up tithing system in the Bible, it blew my mind when I read it. God said, you can't even borrow with my permission to pay funeral expenses. <laughs> you know, have people come to me all the time and say, Pastor, I got, got a little behind on my tithe. Got a little behind on my tithe, Pastor, but I, I, I'm going to make it up. That payday loan shop mentality. I, I'm going to make it up. Some, some way, you, you know more than God does, huh? I, if I was going to make an excuse, it would be for funeral expenses. But I don't know more than God does, and neither do you. God said you can't even do it for that, that with my favor and my blessing on it. Uh, amen. But Mr. Big Stuff thinks uh, that it's okay if I'm in a little jam and I need to pay some bills. And it's okay, Pastor. I'm going to get it all caught up one day. Uh, hey, it's time we woke up uh, to say, God, there's not one part of your word uh, that I'm ever going to try to prove you wrong uh, to make me wrong right on. No matter how hard finances get, uh, no matter how difficult the economy becomes, uh, no matter how far behind I get on my bills, uh, if you said it's the first fruits, uh, that's what it's going to be. Amen. That's what it's going to be every day of my life. Uh, Every time I get a paycheck, uh, it's going to be the first fruits uh, because you said it. uh, And I'm going to believe you. I'm never going to try to make you wrong. To justify myself, make myself right. Rebellious kids. Oh, God. It's a plague of this generation that parents are trying to reverse God's judgments that He made about rebellious kids. Parents, one God, apostolic, Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. I mean, they've got their holiness down pat. They've got everything just right. But God said, that son or daughter of yours that becomes rebellious. Hallelujah. You've got to get them out of the house. 
what God said to do. You ought to read it, my friend. He didn't say just out of the house. But you got to carry the stones with you. With you to the elders to, to say, this my son, this my daughter, this was mine, and we've got to put out rebellion uh, from among us, and I can't let it live in my house. Uh, I can't let it be here. We've got to get rid of it. Now, I know you wish you could kill him under the new covenant. Uh, amen. But you can't. Uh, but you still can show him the door. You still can usher them out to the door. Uh, you still can pack their bags uh, and put them out on the front porch. Uh, but we're living in a whole generation uh, that said, no, I'm sorry, Pastor. I can't do that. I don't care what they did. Uh, I can't put my own flesh and blood out. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. And you're disannulling the judgment of God to make yourself right to try to prove God to somehow, some way, God wasn't merciful enough. God wasn't sensitive enough. God wasn't tender enough. How in the world could he ever tell us to purge out the old leaven? Because a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. How could he ever tell that? I sat recently in the office, a man with some parents in the church that I pastor, to inform them of your daughter who is dating a guy from another church of good reputation. They have been actively involved in fornication on a regular basis. We're not talking about a 12-year-old. We're talking about somebody that's in her 20s. To watch the parents as they looked at me. And, Sorry, Pastor. Nothing we can do. She's full grown. Nothing we can do. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's nothing you can do with an active fornicator living in your house. There is nothing that you can do. They just looked at me like there's no other young kids for her to mess up. There's no other young ones to be a bad example. And, and all that argument... Uh, and I looked at both of them. I said, wait a minute. You, you don't understand uh, what God understands about immorality. What you don't understand uh, is just because there's no other younger siblings uh, that those spirits can jump on. Uh, if you coddle that and you keep that in your home, uh, I said, that spirit of immorality uh, is going to get on you, Daddy. Uh, and that spirit of immorality uh, is going to get on you, Mama. And the minute I said that to Mama, amen, this look of guilt uh, came over her face. Uh, and I thought, oh my God, it's on her already. Uh, it's on her already. Uh, she thought she knew more than God. God knew uh, because her maternal feelings uh, toward a son or a daughter uh, said, no, 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 uh, I can't put them out in the street. Uh, I can't stop the plague of fornication uh, here at our house. Uh, I can't do anything about it. Uh, hey, 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 Mr. Big Stuff, uh, where in the world uh, did you get your thinking from? Uh, you don't know more than God does. Uh, and God told us uh, how to Deal with a rebellious child. But you're going to prove God wrong. You're going to prove God wrong, aren't you? You're going to prove God completely wrong. Under this circumstance, your poor little darling, hey man, just didn't get enough love from her dad. Just didn't get enough care and tenderness. Mamas are fighting pastors like they have never fought pastors before. You better hear this preacher right now. 
Amen. I'm preaching to you in the Holy Ghost. Uh, Amen. Mamas are fighting their pastors uh, like they have never fought their pastors before when it comes to the area of their children. Uh, And you're not just fighting a pastor. You're fighting the Almighty God. God said it. Uh, God said it. Uh, God said it. Uh, You're not going to make him wrong. Uh, You're not going to prove him wrong. Uh, In the end, your children will be lost. Children will be lost. Those ugly spirits will get all over you. An adultery that you never thought you would do before suddenly becomes a possibility and a temptation in your life. So you know more than God does about relocating to another church. Man, I'm smiling up here while I'm saying this. I ain't got a bad spirit. Hallelujah. And I don't need a video camera to prove it. Hallelujah. Amen. You you know more than God does. Amen. God calls it church hopping, but you call it I'm just relocating out of the area. And I'm needing to go somewhere else, Pastor. Amen. Twice within the last two weeks, I've sat, uh, amen, in the office across from families uh, in my church. Families that have come for many, many years uh, because they get something in their spirit that says, uh, amen, we need a fresh start. We're going to have to move out of the area. We're going to have to do this, that, and the other. And look at them right in the eyeball and say, you know what? Uh, I, 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 I've counseled you about this, uh, but the spirit that I'm getting back from you is that you're being held against your will, that you're being forced to stay here, and you don't really want to stay here. Amen. You want to go. And I said, so I'm here today to tell you, you are released from this church. Uh, amen. Go wherever you want to go. Amen. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, move wherever you want to move. Uh, but, 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 pastor, amen. Uh, will, will God still bless me? Uh, I said, you hadn't been listening to God uh, all along. Uh, amen. God's got a man. God's got a plan. Uh, I'm just a part of that plan that God has. Uh, but you know more than God does. Uh, so hit the road. Uh, amen. Amen. Figure it out in the end and see what's going to happen to you. We need to knock that spirit of this big stuff in the head and say, devil, you're a lying rascal. God's always going to be right and I'm always going to be wrong. I'm not going to argue with God's man. I'm not going to resist it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Amen. Dating. Who to date? Who to date? Boy, we've got a whole generation of teenagers that are so unbelievably stubborn when it comes to being Mr. Big Stuff. You hear me? You hear me? Amen. They know. They know. They know more than mom knows. They know more than dad knows. They know more than el pastor conoce. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you'd be surprised. I feel like looking at some of them like God did it, Joe, but say, you must be very old. You must be very old. If you know more than all the generations combined that are older than you know. Wow, we got a prodigy on our hand. Man, you're brilliant. Look out, Einstein. Here they come, brother. They got it all down pat. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to reverse God's judgment. They're going to prove that pastor was wrong and they were really in love. So when the cell phone, amen, and the emails are monitored, the text messages start. Yeah. I had a pastor 
a long ways away, a different state. He said, Brother White, he said, is there any way I can get that text message that this guy from my church sent to that girl in your church after he was told to cut it off? I said, you better believe it, brother. I'll be happy to get it for you. I'll be happy to send it to you and let you see it and read it for yourself. He said, because he's now working on my granddaughter. And she thinks he's the sharpest thing that there ever was. And somehow, some way, Grandpa can't quite convince her that I've got more wisdom than she does about this. And what am I going to do? I'm preaching about Mr. Big Stuff, brother. You can be awful young and still think you're Mr. Big Stuff. You can be a teenage girl at adolescent stage and think you know more than your pastor's wife does when she tells you, leave that boy alone. Amen. You don't need to pay him any attention at all. If he's not under submission, he'll be a terrible taskmaster if you ever marry him. Uh, oh, let's wake up uh, and say, God, you're not wrong. Uh, you're not wrong. My parents aren't wrong. Uh, my pastor's not wrong. Uh, hey, man, it's me that's wrong. Uh, it's me that's wrong. Uh, it's me that's wrong. Uh, I'm never going to disprove uh, the judgments of God. Never going to do it. Never. How to raise godly kids. I'm just about through. I've spent the last five weeks of lessons on training up a child in the way that he should go. My mind is blown by how many people there are in the church that I pastor that absolutely refuse to do it God's way and spare the rod, spoil the child. They've all gone to the same high schools. They've all gone to the same colleges. And they've all heard the same arguments. And they all present the same answers. How that there's better ways to get your kids to mind. How that there's more civil ways than the old barbaric child-beating way that was espoused way, way, way back then. And the monsters that they're raising. I want to say, so you proved God... It looks to me like God proved you wrong. Amen. And getting people to take how this world is conditioned this generation and say, let every man be a liar. But let God be truth. Oh, hallelujah. If God said it to I'm going to prove it uh, that I believe it by embracing it uh, and saying, I'm doing it God's way. Uh, you can do it like the philosophers if you want to, uh, but I'm doing it God's way. Uh, I want God's results. Uh, I want God's blessings. Uh, I want God's anointing. Uh, I want God's favor on my marriage. Uh, I want God's blessings on my kids. Uh, I'm not trying to prove God wrong. Uh, matter of fact, I'm not trying to prove anything. Uh, but the God, you're always right. Uh, and whatever I need to change, I'm going to change it. Uh, however, I need to readjust. Uh, I'm going to readjust. Because I want to do it God's way. Stand with me together. Job said, Oh God. He said, Lord, I, I'm so embarrassed. He said, I'm going to put 
my hand over my mouth. He said, I, I babbled on like an idiot for too long trying to make God wrong and me right. And he said, I'm going to stop arguing with the Almighty God. And I'm going to let God be the one who runs the universe. Be the same one who runs my family life. How God said that a husband is supposed to treat a wife is exactly how I'm going to do it. Because I'm never going to prove God to be wrong. Lady, how God said a woman is to reverence her husband better be exactly how you do it. Because you and a whole generation of women's livers is never going to prove God wrong. Never, never, and God says, I want to see if you can walk humbly before your God. I want to see if you can have an attitude that says, preach it to me, preacher. And if God said it, that's how I'm going to live it. That's exactly how. I'm not going to fuss. No more tug of wars. I'm not going to resist. Not going to do it any different. Hallelujah. We have time for a little season of prayer. Would you mind coming if you want to find a place to pray as we sing unto the Lord? Come on. Let's bow before our God. Let's kneel before Him. Oh, Master. I don't know it all, God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to try to reverse your judgment on anything, Lord. I want to live in submission to You. You're right. You'll always be right, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let's talk to the Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I want Your favor, Your oh, blessing. I want it, God. I want you, Lord. Oh, God. In every area of my life, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I challenge you, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'll never be right till you be wrong, God.